an awesome kid. Right now on Denver 7 News at 8 o'clock on Local 3, a tragic loss leaves a local family reeling. How the community is showing up to support them and honor a life taken too soon. So it's like uh, history repeating itself. Thousands of Denver Public School students are heading back to class today. I'm sitting down with the superintendent of the state's largest district to talk about the challenges and reports of infighting among school board members. All of you who are listening in need to rally behind our students because we all need this support. And the Broncos are trying to bounce back from an ugly loss in Buffalo, even with mostly backup players on the field. Why new head coach Nathaniel Hackett says it was a learning experience. Yeah. And he is making some tough decisions on, on who to keep That's, on yes. the roster. We learned that Buffalo is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. they are. Right. Yeah, they're one of the <laughs> favorites. That's yes. right. Yeah. But we didn't have many on the field. No, like, exactly. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Russell oh, yeah. wasn't there. No, we're saving yeah, the best yes. still. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Last preseason mm. game Saturday. Mm. All right. Mm. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Right now, though, you're looking at a nice start to the work week. Take a look at this shot from Winter Park. A little foggy into some of that low line cloud cover there early on. We will still see a few storms and showers pop up today, but all is pretty quiet this morning. We had down just to the east of uh, Pagosa Springs a little snow falling in the mountains there uh, early this morning. Definitely getting cold enough. We were just a few degrees above freezing there over Bertha Pass early on. Fast forward to this afternoon. Most of the storms that we're going to see today will be likely south of Denver, uh, closer to the Palmer Divide, and then down toward the Springs into Pueblo, and then in through the southern Front Range Mountains. Here in town, things are getting warmer and drier. We're going to see highs right around 80 to about 85 close to Denver. A little warmer near Fort Collins and Greeley, and it's warming up in the mountains there too. More 70s than 60s in through the Central Mountains today. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at just how much warmer it's going to get here through midweek and when those thunderstorms do return to Denver coming up. And right now we have a pretty big crash up in Boulder County. It's going to be on the southbound side of 287 at Isabel. So right before you would get to Arapahoe here. So it's on the southbound side. We're backed up to about Jasper. So it is pretty heavy stop and go traffic in there with that crash on 287. A lot of folks use that and there's really no great alternates. You have to go way far away to get around it. You still have some delays up on the north side of town. Earlier problem on 270 all clear, but we're still draining off from all those folks that are trying to use alternate routes. Still same thing as you take a look at the, from the camera there at 225 and Parker Road. Still awful all the way down past Yosemite. It just packed up traffic so badly. And you have four lanes basically going down to two or three, so it's just going to stay slow for us, unfortunately, on that southbound side in there. And all lanes are open down here at I-25. It's still a lot of traffic in and out of the Denver Tech Center. C-470 is busy, and it's busy out west as well. A Colorado family is going through the unthinkable right now, planning a funeral for their 13 year old who was just playing basketball at a local park when he was gunned down over the weekend. A huge crowd came out to support the family and this person right here on crutches is the boy's cousin who was also there when it happened. He was shot in the leg. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live from that growing memorial dedicated to this beloved child in the community. And you see here, Brian, just how much people cared for 13 year old Zay Rosales. They all came out yesterday. We're talking about nearly 100 people out here, uh, family, friends, leaving all of the items that you see right here, the flowers, uh, the notes. They left balloons here as well. And of course, uh, this place is just spread out with candles and even two basketballs right next to the basketball court where those two boys were playing. Now yesterday, all of those who showed up, they hugged, they cried, mourning the 13 year old, remembering just how full of life he was. Zay was an awesome kid. Everybody loved him, he was loved by many. And as you can see, all the people that are here, he was, he was a good boy. Zay's cousin, 15 year old Elias De Herrera, he was also shot Saturday afternoon. He was shot in the leg, but was home as of yesterday. He even actually came by the vigil here, making an appearance for his younger cousin. There weren't only family members here. There were so many teens here as well. Teens who probably should have been spending Sunday night not having to worry about what happened here at this park. Instead, spending the night watching TV or getting ready for a Monday morning for school. Instead, they stood alongside their friends mourning another one of their friends, 13 year old Zay. And as friends and family continue mourning Zay this morning, we know that they are asking themselves a lot of questions why and how this could have happened. But at least they know who did this. Police say 19 year old Yair Solis was arrested yesterday. He's being charged with both murder and attempted murder. Police saying he's the person who drove by the park and shot those two teens.
We're in Longmont this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. All right. Uh, very sad. And to see more gun violence is just tragic. Thank you, Veronica. Well, thousands of Denver public school students and teachers are heading back to class today. You're taking a live look at Ellis Elementary School. This is near Dahlia and East Mexico Avenue. The superintendent uh, is there this morning and some other leaders are talking with students and welcoming back mm -hmm. families on really the first sort of normal back to school since before the pandemic. I sat down with Superintendent Dr. Alex Marrero to talk about DPS's new year, the district's strategic roadmap dubbed Every Learner Thrives. And we also talked about recent reports of infighting among school board members. In an open letter to the community last week, Director Tay Anderson wrote that interpersonal issues have sidetracked the board from their important work for students. What would you say to parents who are reading these articles about the school board? not being on the same page when it comes yeah. to their students. I have incredible amount of respect mm. for all seven of them because when I meet with them, not only do they push my thinking, I see uh, their passion in every session. Um, I want to acknowledge that perhaps when they get together, uh, as of late, uh, they haven't been in a common uh, accord, but I know that's going to change because now we have a strategic roadmap and also data that tells us, okay, we need to all get together mm. beyond the school board, meaning all of you who are listening in need to rally behind our students because we all need the support. What does it mean to lay out a, a strategic plan and how will that guide your decisions? It's a strategic roadmap. Now why? And that may seem insignificant for some, but it's very important for me. So strategic thinking doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. A roadmap, there's many ways that you can get to your destination. A plan is very rigid. And what happened during the pandemic, there were a lot of plans that were crumbled up and tossed out the window. And he said that roadmap sets goals to be achieved by 2026, and there are strategies to get there, but not year by year benchmarks necessarily. We also discuss concerns about declining enrollment and school closures, as well as equity and closing gaps for students of color and non-English speakers. We'll post my full interview on the DenverChannel.com. Our teachers do so much for our kids, but they are not getting paid enough compared to other professions. According to a report from the Economic Policy Institute, which finds teachers in our state earned about 36 percent less than other Colorado workers with college degrees, which was the widest gap in the country. The Colorado Department of Education reports the average teacher earned more than $60,000 in 2021, but districts vary widely and the starting pay can be very low. The median Colorado teacher earned closer to $45,000 a year. But it is back to school for thousands of college students in both Boulder and Fort Collins. Today is the first day of class at CU and CSU. In fact, CSU's freshman class could set a record for size. I'm getting uh, constant uh, messages from uh, the departments and colleges about opening up new, new, new sections of courses for the first year students. Uh, there's a lot of uh, pressure on the facilities to fit everybody in and fit all the classes in. And those are exactly the kind of problems you want to have. Yeah, a lot of traffic around there, too. There are about 30,000 more people in both Boulder and Fort Collins with students back for the fall semester. The city of Denver is talking to food truck operators about ways they can operate in Lodo. Food truck operators told us the proposals include allowing six food trucks per night, but requiring them to close by midnight. Food trucks were banned uh, from that area last month after a police shooting that injured six innocent bystanders as bars were letting out. The city says the decision and the shooting were not related. A Virginia based law firm warned Denver last week that it could be sued for the ban on food trucks, uh, saying that ban was unconstitutional. Survivors of the Marshall Fire are celebrating a milestone in the recovery process. Thanks to the generosity of Denver 7 viewers, $25,000 went to the group Superior Rising to help the town and the Coal Creek Crossing neighborhood with debris cleanup. And now that they're almost done, they held an event to bring the community back together to catch up and feel the camaraderie once again. Being able to come together, have just kind of a fun time, fun environment, uh, and a chance to just to be a neighborhood, be a community again, I think it's just a really important part of the recovery. Superior Rising co-director John Heckman there says the group will also hold a similar event for the Rock Creek neighborhood. Well, I love a good thrift store and 
Obviously, a lot of other people do as well because business is booming. Sales are surging, likely because inflation has made other types of shopping so much more expensive. The Colorado Sun reports Goodwill of Colorado saw a 35% increase in purchases at its retail and resale locations this year. Yeah. Not surprising because you can get much better deals on clothes and oh, housewares, yeah. furniture, stuff kids you won't stuff. find anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, that's right. More teens are hitting the road across Colorado after the break. Some top tips from state troopers to keep your young drivers and the rest of us safe. And Colorado is in the top 10 for home price declines, but it's not all bad news for homeowners.